the webinar in just a few minutes. Um, just hold tight while well, we're going to wait for a few more people to dial in. Has disconnected. The conference will be terminated in five minutes. Oh, now? Okay, excellent. I'm so sorry about that, these tricky phones. If it's not my phone, I don't know what to do with it. Uh, so what time is it? All right, we're going to give it until about 5 after before we start. We're just going to let a few more people dial in, so hold tight. Yeah, guys, we're going to give one more minute for people to dial in, so just hold tight.
We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever you may be. My name is Nicole. I'm, with, I'm the community manager with Encapsula. Uh, many thanks to everybody joining us today and taking time to uh, watch our webinar with Tempest Technologies. Um, today I have Jason Schweitzer. He's the CEO of Tempest Technologies. And then we also have Terrence Chong, who is the Solutions Manager for Encapsula, for any technical questions you guys might have at the end. Um, so before we get started, a few housekeeping notes. Um, we are going to be recording today's session. We're going to send that recording to you afterwards. So, um, And also, uh, if you have any questions, um, just feel free to send them in the little chat box. You guys have been doing pretty well so far um, typing your inquiries in there. So at any time during the uh, presentation today, feel free to type in your questions and then at the end we will answer as many questions as we can. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Jason. Um, Jason, are you there? I hear me. Yes, I can. Presenter privileges to you now. Okay, well, you can see my screen. I can see the screen, great. So now this is just a kind of quick overview of what we're going to be doing today. It's going to be a 30-minute webinar um, to answer your questions probably after the session. Um, and just a quick review, Encapsula, we, uh, as a company I work for, we uh, provide any website and web application with the best of breed security, DDoS protection, load balance, balancing, and failover solutions, available as a standalone service or as an integrated solution. Jason, why don't you tell us about Tempest? Tempest Technologies is an integration services provider and effectively, we, we provide all kinds of payment card solutions for um, companies to accept credit, debit, gift, check, pretty much any way you can pay except uh, cash. And provide those solutions with a combination of web service, web payment portals, and terminals and applications and whatnot. Obviously, a large portion of this of our business is done on the internet, and therefore, uh, we're a, a longstanding, I believe, one of the earliest. Uh, customers of Encapsula, and um, along we've been very happy with our service and been a long-time customer, and that's why we're uh, excited about the product as it continues to evolve. We're going to go through uh, the business and technical challenges for SaaS companies, such as Tempest Technologies, um, and a couple of solutions that people can look into. So the first one is saving time with WAF, uh, web location firewalls. And then solution number two is increasing your website uptime. So uh, we're going to talk about ways that can be done through failover IS, uh, ISPs, uh, SSL front end, and DDoS and PCI. And then we're going to wrap up with the results and benefits, uh, specifically what Jason and his team experienced using Encapsula. Um, and then Q&A will be at the end. So we will start collecting your questions, uh, if you have any questions throughout the, the webinar, and we will address them at the end. Put up. I was say, we're first going to do a poll question. Um, and you can answer in the chat um, how many of you have run or helped manage IT for your SaaS company? Go ahead and reply in the chat for that. Looks like a good amount of you. Your IT or 
security for your SaaS company. That's a great number to see. It's very important. Okay, great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, one of the things that we want to talk about today uh, and address are scale avail scalability, availability, security, and, and load balancing. The first thing that we want to talk about is, is, is scalability. You know, effectively, we want to create an environment where, you know, you start your SaaS business as one web server um, in terms of duplication, whether it be AS.P or Ruby or um, or whatever your stack is. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but we want to be able to build that beyond one web server. And there's several ways in Capsule that can allow you to do that. Uh, one of the um, that we can scale is with multiple servers. So you can do multiple servers um, in one center. You do uh, multiple servers in multiple data centers. Effective what Encapsula will do is it will sit on the edge of the network and it will use its ability to sit on the front end, I call it the tip of the spear. Ingla effectively has many, many data centers with incredible amounts of bandwidth. And those data centers sit uh, at key interconnect points of the internet. So um, we have availability in Ashburn and in, in Chicago. Uh, in Miami, in the West Coast, in many, many countries around the world. And the things this allows them to do very reliably is to basically sit between you and the endpoint. The importance of that is that it, it effectively impulses from application provider any more anyway to um, do everything you need to do from a scalability perspective with a huge amount of investment and effectively what it will allow you to, to basically move your scalability concerns out and putting a layer of intelligence you would have put say a load balancer or uh, a web application firewall in front of your application in capsula you can really let them all that work and outsource it availability uh, effectively will mean that the edge proxy for Encapsula that they provide will detect failures of specific servers, of specific data centers, and specific backhaul uh, origin server uh, connectivity. And effectively what that means is that if one of your servers is down or if one of your uh, SPs is down, they pick the next one. One of the things about this is you have a great deal of visibility into what's traveling through the, the Encapsula cloud, the real-time availability in terms of viewing the, the sessions that are coming across, um, the ability to immediately react and write rules uh, to, to control traffic or protect you from uh, other attacks. It's really important for us, obviously, dealing with payment card data. Um, from this uh, model, we're concerned about PCI. That deals in credit cards, you have to be a PCI compliant organization. And one of the PCI requirements is to have a web application firewall. In Capsula, that build nicely um, and does it with a very little upfront investment. So that's a really big deal. From a thing and failover perspective, um, you know, in order to meet SLAs, if you're a small company and don't have SLAs, you go into a, a bigger company that will have to have SLAs. And by taking the Encapsula, effectively, if one of your uh, nodes is down, Encapsula will seamlessly route to the next one without you having to do a heavy lifting from that perspective. The when it comes to setting this up yourself, um, meaning if you have physical hardware and you I don't want to, I don't want to do a cloud-based solution. I really want to do this myself. Um, is you have very expensive upfront costs. At the minimum, you're going to have to do a load balancer, 
Um, you still have your firewall, but you're, then you also need a web application firewall. The reality of this is that that really doesn't get you a whole lot. Um, this is what we used to do. And we used to have you know expensive WAFs, expensive load balancers. And really you're going to do some basic rate limiting. Uh, but this is a model that worked several years ago. You know, if you are fortunate, and let's say you have a gigabit connection to the to the internet, which would be a reasonable size pipe, um, then this would work uh, just like several years ago. The problem is, is that now any denial, when I say DDoS, if, if you're not familiar with DDoS, DDoS is basically attributed denial of service attack, where attacker will try to overwhelm your web server. And you know, it was relatively uncommon for more than several hundred megabit or a gigabit attack. And so it was reasonable and practical to do that. However, now a gigabit attack DDoS would be considered trivial. There are literally DDoS attacks that are in the hundreds of mega, uh, megabits, hundreds of gigabits, in fact. So it's no practical company a reasonable size that can withstand that kind of attack. And, and it would, quite frankly, be kind of a facility to buy that much capacity, um, even if you were huge, just to withstand a DDoS. And why Encapsula has all these data centers. One of the neat effects of the data centers is that they're geographically dispersed throughout the Internet. What that means is, is that if a particular client has, has these bots or, or botnet that they're using to DDoS, you, those botnets are probably all over the world. So what happens is that, that the attack goes to the closest encapsula data center, and effectively what, what that does is it divides and conquers the attack. So that depending on what the interne interconnect points that are geographically closest to the attacker, uh, they will absorb that attack. And the capsule network has uh, incredible amounts of ability to do rate packet limiting and to challenge specific uh, users to find out if they are actually a, a human or a machine and whatnot. Additionally, physical hardware is, is a high-touch administrative function. There are signature updates. There are firmware updates. At our firmware, our, our, our fire, I mean, our, our math solution that was hardware, you know, it was probably an update every other day for for updates for um, uh, and then there was also firmware updates where we were required to reboot the device probably at least once a month, sometimes more. And for that meant, you know, we're an availability environment. That meant failing all our traffic over to the other one, rebooting this the first one, failing it back, redoing the other device it was more time than our admins wanted to handle in the middle. Night, so that didn't make a lot of sense for us. Other things that Encapsula does, it handles SSL for you, and they have a relationship with a CA. And so, us we host sites for many, many different companies, and it means that it's it's very easy and cheap for us to have them handle all the SSL deployment, certificate updates, and whatnot. Um, effectively, what that means is that we can offer an SSL fronted website um, for even small and medium sized businesses that previously would have been prohibitive for them. You know, if you spend 300 bucks on an SSL certificate, you know, you're immediately at, at for that's a big chunk of the money you'd have to charge a customer. Uh, it's much easier just to use the encapsula model, software as a service model, and use SSL. It's a really great benefit to have SSL taken care of. Mention all the um, SSL reissuance. So, for example, if, if in the case of Heartbleed, uh, Capsule handles all those middle of night emergency kind of fixes for you, uh, and they do a tremendous job at getting all those noise layer stuff out of the front end of your web ecosystem very, very quickly.
chat question about whether you have a WAF. Uh, we can kind of see where people are at along those lines. One thing about Encapsula is that um, it's very quickly to, quick to configure this. Um, one of the things that we found with a hardware WAF is that there's a lot to learn. You've got to install it in your data center. You've got to plumb it up. You've got to learn the device. You've got to learn the user interface. You can use Gmail. You, you can set up Encapsula. Um, if lately all you do is configure your domain, reconfigure your DNS to point to Encapsula, and then you configure the Encapsula to point uh, your origin server. Your server is what they call the origin server. Uh, you can you can do it on origin server, and you can do it with many origin servers. Uh, if you're using SSL, you can either use your existing certificate and upload it to them, or you can wait for their CA to issue a certificate for you. Um, the thing about this is because they're managing all these signatures, there's a, a double um, a benefit of them is that um, to handle all the front end maintenance for you. So you never have to deploy another signature. You never have to worry about maintenance. Um, I alluded to this before, but a zero day attack is maybe, let's just say that you're using WordPress or you're using some kind of another content management system. There's a vulnerability discovered with those, that particular platform. In, uh, even before the vendor fixes the problem, can rules and will quickly deploy them across their network. So if they're seeing an, an attack on a newly discovered vulnerability in, say, WordPress, um, they will then effectively zero-day patch it before you or even the vendor, before you roll out a patch or before the vendor has a patch. So it's a really nice way to create security around it. They have a really nice dashboard that gives you a live view. Basically, you can see effectively the traffic coming from endpoint and see it hitting your servers. You, you can get uh, analytic data about the speed in which your servers are responding. Um, you can move traffic around to your different data centers or different servers on your data centers. And it actually has uh, the ability to do customized rules so you can write specific rules around uh, traffic management or how to block customers you want to block. One of the nice things about this is from the payment perspective, we just block out specific countries. So there's no reason from, from Pakistan or anybody in North Korea or anybody in uh, China to be scanning our network. It doesn't have to happen because none of our customers are over there. Some commerce sites, that may not be true. But for our purposes, there's no reason to have, have um, you know, somebody from Ukraine hitting our site uh, particularly with a scanner or any other reason. So we can block those out, those out directly and they're not allow them to see it. So that's security in and of itself, but it, it, it really reduces footprint um, and it really makes it very, very easy to uh, control access and, and things like that. About as uptime. Um, we use load balancing between three three data centers and six ISPs, um, so it's it's very very configurable and very it's very easy to spread your traffic around for various different sites or whatnot. Um, because Encapsula is reaching out to your servers from every point that is being hit, uh, it's very quick for them to reroute traffic around even specific ISP problems. So if if, they, if level three or um, Freelink is having a bad day. If you have more than one ISP, effectively you or Encapsula can automatically reroute traffic. Um, it all allows um, a utilize lower SLA traders for a higher overall uptime percentage. And that is, as a provider, do you invest in extremely expensive? you know, fine connectivity warranted service, or do you buy three lower SLA carriers? Um, 
the bot the problem with a five ninth carrier is if they're on you're still in trouble. Effectively what this allows you to do is to create a higher overall uptime by using lower SLA connectivity. So you can spend the same or even less dollars and get a higher uptime uh, effectively because you then have the ability to have automatic failover from the from the cloud perspective. Uh, very, very easy to administrate. Really just take one data center or origin server down and you can take it out of the out of the encapsula cluster ahead of time, and the traffic will continuously flow. Things about this is it also allows you to do um, as differently um, than create a, a nightmare on your backend system if you have more than if you're hosting more than one website. You can deploy one web one SSL certificate on your origin server, and then let SSL be handled on the Encapsula front end. So if you have xd.com on the Encapsula front end, you can be c.com on your origin server, and it's just encrypted. And Encapsula doesn't really care what the, what this certificate is. The reason it's important is you have 200 clients. You don't have 200 IPs and 200 uh, anything else set on your web server. So it makes it really nice uh, from that perspective. I talked a bit about the, the encapsulated certificates. If you have a large number of certificates um, or multiple clients, you're aware of what a pain it is to manage that many certificates. And it's nice to have them worried about, about you know, these 300 certificates are expiring in the next month. That can be a tremendous amount of overhead if you're doing a lot of um, certificate management and to have and kind of worried about uh, making sure they don't, they're not expiring is a, is a big deal. Any member had a 24 hour if it, uh, to know until their certificate expires knows what I'm talking about. One of the things about this is that it really takes when we talk about DDoS and PCI, uh, it takes a lot of the, the trouble that comes in DDoS and moves it to ISO um, or oh, it's on a layer seven. So effectively, unless a hacker can figure out your origin server's IP, all they're go all you're going to see is layer seven traffic. And what I mean by layer seven is just the HTTP tra traffic. Um, network infrastructure attacks such as SUDs or DNS reflection. You know what those are? They're basically, they're just raw of traffic that don't have anything to do with your application, and their their only job is to fill up the pipe. Uh, they're very effective, but because they're doing that at Encapsula and not you, they don't hit you. So if only, you know, you have and it's very, very easy for a very cheap DDoS to completely fill it. The whole point of what we're trying to do here is to block it further upstream. Uh, the last thing for this slide is effectively P uh, Encapsula is a PCI compliant organization. I mean, they've valid been validated by an auditor uh, to meet the PCI compliance mandates. That means that you are allowed to list them as a provider on your um, uh, a report, submit that to your auditor, or you submit that to your uh, acquiring organization. Um, you can as compliant, and they're listed as compliant on on the uh, the PCI Council. Encapsula for a reasons, but cost isn't isn't one of them. I mean, certainly cost is always a factor, but the reasons to use Encapsula, in my mind, are are everything I just talked about up until this point. Pair what you're going to have to have and what you get, um, it's a no-brainer in my mind. Uh, that's why we've been using them for so long. If you like a Barracuda, and you just go to barracuda.com, 
what this is what we use, which was a hardware layer. Um, for we needed redundant power supplies, we needed redundant devices. I mean, if this thing takes, if if this device turns into a brick overnight, we have to be up. We can't get down. So we need two of them, and for 60, which is the enterprise class layer with redundant power supplies, you're looking at $25,000. $17,000 annually for signatures. Um, and you have to buy all your own SSL certificates. Um, and, you know, all the time it takes to do uh, maintenance. Because Capsula sits at the edge of the network, we'll do a lot of caching for you, meaning about a 3% reduction in that. Things like images and high intensity that are just basically sucking up bandwidth on the pipe from your server to the outside world, most of those static elements just go away from your bandwidth uh, calculations. So once the edge proxies in Encapsula have pulled the data, they cache that on their edge. And basically, if, if some requests that, you know, your gay image off your web server now. They're only going to get it from the the, the edge proxy. They're not going to send up your pipe every time. Band can get pretty expensive, especially as you scale. So you can probably make an argument to pay for encapsula just on band costs if you know, your organization have a lot of bandwidth with free applications. I talk about zero day. This is the sleep at night from an administrative perspective. Um, and the availability perform Im improvements. Downtime's really, really expensive. Um, to have them ha have that team on the front end worrying about having network availability outages and have the, the back end systems automatically fail over one of your um, systems down is really nice. It doesn't it means that you don't have to have the network ops people up there peer into the internet space trying to make sure understand what's broken. The work is really, really done for you already. App. Really want to set this up, up to encapsula.com. Up for an account. You can point your DNS and you can probably do all that in about an hour. Um, it's really that quick and easy to set up. Um, if you want to scale it up, use load balancing. If you want SSL later, you can certainly do that. Uh, but the really important thing is to let, let Capsula take the bullets on the front end and allow them to use that bridge that they, by sitting on the front end of the network, really the nasty traffic. They can put SQL injection attacks. They can take those big DDoS attacks uh, and really solve a lot of those problems uh, that you know, it's very difficult to, to handle on your own. We're going to move into a Q&A session now and use your chat and send um, Send your questions, and then we will answer them as best we're able to. Either I'll answer it from our customer experience perspective, or someone from a capsule will chime in and ask specific questions about the capsule product. Thanks, Jason. So now, um, any attendees that might have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat, um, and I will direct them to whoever needs to answer them. Probably open up for questions for like the next two minutes. Um, I think my, uh, I'm going to switch back to my desktop. Hmm. 
Where'd it go? Alright, you guys have any questions? Talk to me privately. This is my email address. Jason, thank you so much for presenting today. I, we really appreciate your insight. Um, if you guys have any questions for Jason as well, you can email me directly and I will forward you on to Jason. Um, again, if you, uh, we will be sending out the recording of this session a little bit later. And I guess that concludes our webinar today. So thank you again to Jason and thank you all for taking the time and uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Thank you. The has disconnected. The prints will be terminated in five minutes.